And it's not easy to want to admit that to ourselves, but I believe that as much as we can manifest, we can manipulate the manifestation at the same time. It lives in the same space, you know, and um, it's kind of like a germ. Like that's what I'm seeing right now. It's kind of like somebody telling you, ooh, like, you know, you've got to wash your hands every time you've touched an insect. And I'm like, really? Do you? Well, who says that you have to? What happens if I like to have the grittiness of the earth on my hands? You know, but it's it's all the way that we've been taught. And I really hope that with my little bit of sharing or the big part of my sharing is that we're here to 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 honor so much of what we don't know but at the same time it's just an honoring of what the little bit of what i do know welcome to the consciousness of the way i am your humble servant and seafood Taoist master sun ching and it's christmas day once again i know guys you you keep hearing me say this over and over again but once again the universe has brought me an incredible being i've gone down (laughs) to the christmas tree and wow I just am really excited and jazzed and energized as anyone who's an OG or a student knows what it feels like with this amplitude of energy. I want to welcome Michelle Carpenter to the podcast. And she is many many things. Um, um, I, I don't even want to even define her, but she has incredible insight and mastery into conscious and conscious collective and healing physically, mentally, emotionally. So I want to welcome you to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. And um, gosh, I like we've said before, you started to record. Um, it's just so easy and it's just so um, amazing spending time with you, son. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity. And, you know, we, we've had such like my cheeks are so sore <laughs> and I'm sitting going, what are we going to talk about? It feels like we've spoken about so much already, right, but I'm, right. so, I'm so intrigued with our conversation. Yeah, so no, I, um, I'm just so grateful to have you here. Why don't you just fill the audience in a little bit of a backstory of how we got here today, your little journey to this present moment. Gosh. Um, So my journey in this lifetime uh, has not been the easiest in my understanding of, you know, being a human being. Um, There's been a lot of, you know, the the, the buzzword I feel at the moment is trauma. Everybody's traumatized. And um, and I say it's a buzzword because sometimes it gives me a bit of the ick when everybody thinks that, you know, watching a a snake sort of squirm by, by you is Yes, it's traumatizing for me, but it's like, no, guys, what, what's the sensation? What's the feeling? What's the vibration? And that's been a very big learning for me because I have come from a lot of um, uh, trauma in my, 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 my childhood, going into my teenagehood. Um, there was just quite a lot of um, purging, for want of a better statement, you know, purging in the sense of, I kind of feel like, if any of you have been on ayahuasca, the ayahuasca journey, some people have had the most amazing experience, not me. I've just been through the last 50 years, and it feels like the last 15 years of this journey of me going into this accelerated wake up and shake up um, is where my journey started to change. And the pivotal part of my journey, and just, just a few of um, the things that have um, that I'm still working through on an ongoing basis. Uh, I was sexually abused at the age of five by my uncle. Um, I don't know how, how open would you like me to be? Is this just? I a, want you a, to be open. This is a, a platform you. for you to share. This, uh, all, everything that we put on this platform is to give people a greater insight. And and what they do is they hear the stories of this incredible conversation we're having, and all of a sudden they have epiphanies. Wonderful. How okay. much mastery? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, and my my dad was a. You know, we were born in Rhodesia, which is now called Zimbabwe. My dad was a Rhodesian soldier. My parents were young when um, they had my brother, and then they had me three and a half years later. And <clears throat> excuse me, I've come to realize there was a lot of fear in in that alone. You know, my mom used to lock us in the bedroom when my dad was going out into um, wherever he was going, wherever he was stationed to go, and. There was a lot of drinking, a lot of growing up, a lot of in, in our growing up, a lot of partying. Um, and my mom was 
she carried a lot of fear and she was a very angry woman. Um, and uh, my dad was doing his thing, you know, and whatever that may be. And um, again, I will remind anybody and everybody that I'm still a work in progress because there was a lot of the fear that was placed onto me. My dad had had affairs when when um, he was younger. My mom had programmed me that, you know, men were bad. Uh, again, part of my sexual abuse, I'd come to learn that I'd really hated men. Um, and then also my mom just kind of giving me a lot of the uh, thought processes of, you know, men are bad, men are bad. And I've come to realize over the last 15 years that, we all carry something in some sense of um, perhaps suppression. And that's why I talk about the purging, you know, because my life in the last 15 years has, has really pushed me to purge a lot of the old. And I say it with a big smile on my face because it hasn't been easy. <laughs> Honestly, my journey is like, what? The? Really? But having said that, I'm incredibly grateful when I look back because I realized the universe was preparing me for a lot of the work that I do do and um, help humans with. I had bulimia. I was a dancer. So again, purging, you know, self-hatred. I don't have the typical ballerina figure. Um, my sexual abuse only started to affect me when I realized as a teenager that it was a really bad thing that had happened to me when I was a young girl. I didn't know any different um, until I was a teenager. And then it brought up a lot of anger, like I say, the, the, the hatred for men. And my uncle was very much involved in our lives, in our journey, you know, um, as our family. Uh, I then had, had had patterns of bringing men into my space and they would cheat, you know. Um, and the, obviously the abandonment wounds of rejection and, and abandonment were very deep in my solar plexus and in my heart. And it just brought me to this stage of life where I kept thinking, what am I doing wrong? You know, always self-worth. What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? And I had a really traumatic experience uh, when I was 24 years old. I'd knocked over and killed a young girl uh, in South Africa. I was a sales rep in part of my past life. And uh, I'd looked down to put a straw into a cool drink and I was on my side of the road and she had run and she had, she um, had misjudged my speed and, uh, and I didn't know what I'd hit. I was in farm territory um, and I just, I just saw my car smoking. Four people had stopped and they walked over and they said, um, they went to go look. I said, have I hit a horse, a cow, a dog? And uh, they'd walked over and said, um, I'd knocked over what they thought at the time was a grown woman. Two months after this accident had happened, all I did was just suppress this, you know, all of this, everything I'm sharing with you right now is just like the suppression. So, you know, I just swallowed it. I'm like, okay, keep going, keep going, because that's what I knew best. And my body was starting to show me for years, you know, sore throats, bronchitis, uh, bladder infections, kidney infections. Uh, my ovaries were all over the place. My periods, I would just... Um, have a period for three to four weeks at a time and these were kind of like the wake up th things that were happening you would have thought but I didn't know any different you know so I just kept on kept being I think kind of staying in my lane um, and then got married uh, sorry what I was going to say was two months after my accident um, the mother of the daughter had actually phoned me and I hope I can share this without um, crying because I know that it's just such a beautiful story and she phoned to find out how I was. And, <laughs> and that for me is magical um, because for that woman to have gone through such a loss <laughs> and phoned me to find out how I was doing was a massive shock to my system, number one. But number two, it taught me so much empathy to reach out to a human being that was so lost. I was incredibly lost in my life. So much so that two and a half months later, I was engaged to who is now my ex-husband and the poor guy, bless his cotton socks. I don't think he knew what he was taking on <laughs> um, because I was just one state of <clears throat> like, you know, one of those little puffer fishes <laughs> that you see in the ocean and my defense mechanisms were exactly that. Like all my quills were out. 
I was always defensive, always very sarcastic. Um, and when I cried, I was shut down when I cried a lot when I was young and as a teenager. And I didn't understand it. I was like, why, you know? So hence the throat, um, the feeling of not being loved. And all I did, son, was just keep seeking for love outside, keep seeking for love from other people. Um, but this woman took the time to actually find out how I was. And she had shared with me that her daughter had been knocked over when she was seven, at the age of seven. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, she was 14 years old um, that she had shared with me. And I was clearly devastated. Uh, but two and a half months later, got engaged, moved from Joburg to Cape Town and just kept on with life, just kept on. And thought, ah, you know, it is what it is. And you've you just got to keep on. And that's still one of my mantras, by the way. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. But no, absolutely. I mean, it's got a lot of juice to it. Absolutely got a lot of juice to it. it it's, absolutely. It's all a crafting tool. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and um, and this still impacts me. I mean, this is when I was 24 and my math is not great. I'm 51 now. So whatever the math says on that, it still impacts me in, in the sense of like this moment of, wow, this woman was going through such loss and such grieving, and yet she took the time out to phone me. And so I got married within, you know, two and a half uh, months after the accident and then married eight months after that. And the bizarre thing is, is in my first wedding, I'm dressed like I was in the medieval times, okay? Like I'm wearing this old dress, you know, that we, we are we, – we, we are taught and conditioned that, you know, this is where we've got to look as a bride. But I looked old and I'm blotchy. Like in my wedding photos, I'm blotchy. And, excuse me, and, you know, in hindsight, that beautiful word, if I look back, man alive. Like I say, bless my ex-husband's cotton socks because he took me warts and all. And, and he then did the best thing ever for me, which was he had an affair six and a half years later. We had a little baby girl. And it was my wake up call. It was my wake up call to go, shit, man, I've got to do something different because I was so, so angry, you know, and my life was so controlled and so fixated and so full of fear. You know, I was so bad that if you if you came to my home and had a cup of coffee or had a cup of tea and you you had your last sip and I'm like, OK, I'm taking it. I'm going to go wash it like that's how bad I was. I was always on. In South African terms, we talk about being on <laughs> and South Africans will get it because we live in the state of fight or flight continuously, always, you know, checking, checking, you know, looking, making sure our windows are up where we're driving, making sure we've got, you know, my, my bag underneath the seat. And you just live in this way of not knowing any different. So I'd had a few incidences where, you know, I'd had um, a guy put uh, a gun to to the side of my head at the car at a traffic light um, and again these are all these responses that I had no idea that I was just completely in the state of um, flux stress 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 all the time and this is just the build-up to where I'm at right now in terms of the magical moment of my soul knew that this journey was all about that and now my soul's realizing and going, okay, you've taken the change on. Now, what are we bringing into this change of this magic? And it's not to say, like I was sharing with you earlier on, like I had a state of flux this morning where I was shitting on the boulders across the road, <laughs> like literally, and going, blah, 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 blah. and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going into this podcast in, in like half an hour's time. Am I, am I going to be able to cope, you know? And thank you, you've helped me sort of come back into my space, you know, and for me, I just went and I grounded myself earlier, and I'm like, I've, I can do this, exactly that statement, keep on keeping on, but to go back to my ex-husband um, having an affair, it was such a wake-up call to myself, because what I did was I went to go see a psychic medium, and the guy just looked at me, a young man said, you don't love yourself, and I'm like, what? Help me with my anger, <laughs> like, isn't this what you people do? You're supposed to help me with your anger, my anger, sorry, my anger. And um, and that led on to me going to go and do this counseling skills course at hospice. I went away for a weekend retreat. And the facilitator that I chose that weekend had had a very similar experience in her journey. She had also knocked over and killed a young girl. Like the universe just aligned us. Her ex-husband ex was also having an affair at the time. And it was just 
surreal that she got me to feel nine years later how I felt about knocking and knocking over this young girl. And it was so incredibly intense that I cried so hard. It felt like my heart had just cracked open to so much grief that um, they had to put me to bed that night. You know, I had these massage therapists and they were giving me anti-inflammatories and nobody could help me in that moment. The only help that I needed was that this facilitator held me. And she allowed me to, again, go through this extraordinary um, cracking open of my heart. And then that led me onto a course of starting to work with this young girl inside of me who had no idea that being sexually abused was even bad, as so severe as what it was. And, you know, that was just this calling of, I just really deep dived into wanting to heal myself. So I started listening to Louise Hay on the CDs because I was still a sales rep. Started listening to Wayne Dyer as we were talking earlier on. And I just wanted more and I wanted more. And I drove her batshit crazy because I'd phone her and go, Wayne Dyer says this and this and this and this. And she's like, oh my God, Michelle, just you seeking to understand. You're seeking to understand. I'm like, but why? Why has this happened to me? So I was very much in my victimhood for such a long time. And, you know, I blamed the world. I blamed my father. I blamed, you know, my uncle. I blamed my mom. I blamed my brothers. I blamed every some person that didn't see me. And the reality was, is I was blaming myself for not seeing me. I didn't know how to look in the mirror without telling myself that you're vain, you're not pretty, you're not this, you're not that. And that took a lot of work to work with the mental thought processes, but over and above all work with my emotions to help my body to start expanding. Because like I say, I just lived in the space of contraction and almost putting out fires all the time. So I didn't know what it meant to actually breathe in life, you know, to actually expand. And then we immigrated, I got remarried um, after my divorce went through and I got remarried and, oh my God, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> and I can say this with absolute <laughs> certainty. My husband, if I thought my first husband was teaching me anything, my second husband has been this absolute magical mirror of me. And if I thought that I hadn't dealt with my anger, I just attracted more of that. And we have now found a space 15 years late in our relationship where we both realized how much we needed to stay in our own lane. Because every time I stepped out of my lane, I, was, I would say to my now husband, you've got to try this and you've got to do that. And I realized I was talking to myself. Mm -hmm. He was like, why? Why do I need to? You know, I'm happy with who I am. I'm like, no, you're not. But we, we went through this real tumultuous time in our relationship, but something just kept us together, son. And it was the love that we have for ourselves and for one another. Because, whoa, we came to New Zealand seven and a half years ago, and this land is incredibly healing because it's so incredibly um, magical. And it just got me to come down to my knees like literally I'd done 10 years of work. So I thought, ha ha ha, in my wisdom um, in South Africa. And I came to New Zealand and I just crashed. And I hit a massive depression. But the beauty of it is it got me to start saying, what do I want? How do I want to be without putting everybody on a pedestal? You know, I had this real syndrome of everybody that was coming into my space gurus my mentors everybody was better than me you know everybody knew more than me and that's not true because we all have our own innate wisdom but I had put people on pedestals because of my lack of worth of myself so you know there's so much to the depth of of who I am and I'm so grateful for my soul's journey but I had to step out of the why was this happening to me and step back into the, okay, this has all been part of my journey and my experience up until this point in time. And it's not to say that I still don't get angry and work with my human emotions and obviously the personality that I am. But I know that it's kind of like when you look back, if I look back at my journey and go, wow, wow, wow. But I've had to really look within. I've really had to go deeply with inside of my shadow self. And like I say, coming to New Zealand really got me to go, 
okay, Michelle, what is it you want? How are you going to do life differently? And my husband and I have collided. We've separated. We've, we've really, it's like taking Play-Doh. You know, when you pull away, Play-Doh for me just feels really great. You know, when you're rolling it and, but every now and again, you want to smash it and then you want to pull it apart. <laughs> and then, and now we at the space where I just got to say to myself continuously by looking at my mm-hmm. husband, if he's angry on the outside, where am I still feeling the anger on the inside? Because for me, life is a mirror. You know, and and sometimes it's looking at the bigger parts of ourselves and sometimes it's looking at the smaller particles of who we are. Mm. And when I was looking at the big parts of myself, you know, it was the behavior was still happening on the outside. So I had to take Mm. responsibility and say, well, if it's happening on the outside, where's my shit? What's happening deep within me? And none of us like to do that. I most certainly am like, (laughs) I was superficial, man. I can completely own it. I was like, this isn't my shit. This is him. He's got PTSD. <laughs> no, Michelle, come back to you because it's still showing up. It's still showing up in, in my world. And I'm a firm believer that if it's showing up in my world, there's still a learning that I've got to go within to me to go, okay, what do I, what am I learning? What am I not learning? You know, and and I say I was very superficial because my ego is very out like, well, I've done the work. I've done the work, you know, and I knew that there was another depth of what I had to do by coming to New Zealand. And it's really helped me navigate um, my nervous system, the rewiring of what, you know, living in a concrete jungle like Joburg is you live in a concrete jungle. It's like you're on. And I didn't know how to be any other way than how I knew how to be, you know, so it was very much about acceptance of myself. And as much as I was doing the mirror work, as much as I was, but there was just a depth that I was missing, I felt. So like I said, brought me to my knees and then the universe started providing me and bringing people into my space. They were at a different level. One of them being a friend of mine, Jill, who spoke to the Galactic Federation of Light. And I'm like, who are they? You know, I had no, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> and I laughed because I'm like, wow, <laughs> man alive, you know. There is so much out there in the consciousness of, of life and the universe. And I know I'm speaking to such a wise master right now, you know, like, and I just love it, like how the universe brings people like yourself into my space, because I know that there's more that I've got to learn. And it kind of makes me go, ooh, but it kind of makes me go, ooh, at the same time. <laughs> and I, I, the universe just sort of bringing people into my space that I... I started to just realize that there's more that I've got to learn. And I hope I'm making sense as I talk about this because it's such a beautiful space to, um, to realize that there is more to learn. But when we get out of our own way. I mean, within Taoism, it's, it's real simple. We, we call it the student is the teacher. The teacher is the student. I as long that. as you never lose sight of that, you you will always be in a state of consciousness. Yeah, and for that's sure. That's a really beautiful place to be and just your admission of that is like it's it's a it's a revelation it's an a, you know a, an epiphany because that's really what people need they need they need to realize that they you know uh, jade emperor one of my teachers always reminds me when you accept you know nothing you know everything yes i love that yeah. i absolutely love that just and repeat. that's the truth isn't it you know when we accept that because what is it we actually truly know i always joke about um, if I come back one day, if my soul reincarnates, I want to be like Tom Cruise, like checking out Earth and going, Mm-mm, not this time around, people. You know? <laughs> like, take me back up, be me back up, Scotty. Um, but we had to learn, and the the difference in 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 my state of being has been nothing short of miraculous, and that's why I'm here to share. I believe with with the guidance of the Council of Eight, I'm here to share truth. I'm here to keep it simple. And, you know, my my journey still sort of takes me back every now and again. When I talk about it, I go, oh, wow, gosh. It's almost like I don't recognize myself. And and yet I do, because if I didn't recognize how far and how uh, how long it's taken me, and it's long in linear terms, you know, in linear time, how long it's taken me to get to this point of reference, 
But yet this is my journey. You know, when I share this with everybody, it doesn't mean that everybody's going to take 15 years to get to a state of being different or channeling or, you know, working through stuff. And that's what I, I love to share and teach is that we're all different. And there's such a comparison in, in this world of spirituality and, and, and it kind of annoys me at times where, and I do, I take, I like, excuse my language, but I like to take the piss because it's like everything's love and light, you know, and I know the council of eight have been reprimanded by a few of my clients saying, Michelle, I thought they were just love. And it's not to say that they're not love, but they're here to share truth. And the truth is what we don't like. I most certainly, when I would go for a reading or, you know, somebody would share somebody with me that I didn't like hearing, I'd be like, oh my God, they, they're just getting it wrong. You know, it's not what I, that's not who I am anymore, you know? And, and then I had to sit back and go, well, they're still picking up on it in my field. So clearly I still, there's still work to be done. And that for me is being truthful to ourselves. And the beauty of, of going within is when you start to look at those not so nice parts of us, and I believe we have all of those parts inside of ourselves, you know, that's why I say to anybody, if you're labeling somebody else a narcissistic, where's that part inside of us? And it's not easy to want to admit that to ourselves, but I believe that as much as we can manifest, we can manipulate the manifestation at the same time. It lives in the same space. You know, and um, it's kind of like a germ. Like, that's what I'm seeing right now. It's kind of like somebody telling you, ooh, like, you know, you got to wash your hands every time you've touched an insect. And I'm like, really? Do you? Well, who says that you have to? What happens if I like to have the grittiness of the earth on my hands? You know, but it's, it's all the way that we've been taught. And I really hope that with my little bit of sharing or the big part of my sharing is that we're here to 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 honor so much of what we don't know but at the same time it's just an honoring of what the little bit of what I do know and as you know everything is vibration so when we say yes to the universe and I was very much no to the universe no to the universe even you know people have shared with me that there's been so many wake-up calls that apparently I was meant to have and to go back to this young beautiful soul you know, I went into the hypnosis and her energy had come to me and she was just incredibly delightful and beautiful and helped me find the forgiveness that I needed to find for that um, interaction with our souls. And uh, it, it's just been a part of just the change that I think that I clearly needed to go through. And But I resisted, man. Holy shit, I resisted. I was just like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. But when, and that's why I say gracefully, when my ex-husband had decided to work, walk his own truth or his own journey, it wasn't easy for me, but I got to see the pattern because my dad had had affairs, my mom's father had had affairs, and there was such truth in me deciding to go through a divorce because my parents had asked me to not. My mom and dad had said, well, look, we had made it work. And I said, well, I'm not you guys. I want, I, I just, this doesn't feel right for me. And, you know, my ex-husband and I, we still get on to this day. We have a daughter between the two of us. And it was very important for me to, as best as I could for myself, to, um, to choose to be different because of our daughter. And, and I say that as respectfully as I can, because um, you know, I invited him and his girlfriend into our home and I said, I have to meet her. You know, we've got a little girl between the four of us now. And, and that for me is where I look back and I go, was I, what was I thinking? What was I actually thinking? But I don't know because I was just in the, in the moment of just, this is my knowing, this is what I've got to do. And well, it, I just want to make a point when you said, I wasn't thinking that's the best place to be. The second you start thinking you're not knowing, I always remind people, if you're thinking you're not knowing, if you're feeling, everything is realized. Yes, I love that. And I mean, you just, you literally just gave it all to the audience. The most powerful thing you can do, be present right now. That's it. That's it. 
because that's the, you know, often I feel like I had, this is how I was. Like I, I used to describe myself as a chicken without a head. Now, excuse me, um, when we were young, we raised chickens and we used to farm them, you know, like not farm them in the, in the big scale of the word, but we looked after, we had like our own resources. So we'd have somebody, you know, my dad would chop off the heads and my brother and I would run around and let them bleed out, you know, then I'd help my mom, um, you know, look after the chicken. But I literally was like, here's my head, Michelle, and this was my body. I was so detached because of my trauma responses, I was so detached from myself, from my presence of who I am. And that's been the beautiful calling of coming back to me. Is that Again, it's not to say that every now and again, I go into a trauma response, I can become disassociated. Um, but I've come to realize the difference of being in my state of flux, my trauma responses, the disassociation, and the actual moment of being, for me, that's where you're just like, whoa, you're just in it. And nothing else exists except this beautiful true moment. So even my story to anybody who's watching this, you know, my story I know can be heavy. And there's quite a few details that I've left out. But take on what resonates. And if there's a heaviness in that, just let it churn, you know, let it just be like, oh, this is uncomfortable and, 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 and feel it, feel it. Let your body just feel the experience of my story, because in that there's something that you perhaps are learning, you know, and, and my hope is that by me sharing, because for years, I didn't want to share my story. I'm like, what are people going to learn in my story? What? Like, it's just a story, but we've all got a story to share. And, and I realized that that was then and this is now. So even yeah. people, yes. So, so you know what, you, I'm, I'm sure you've had this for all these years that you are so in your, in your wisdom, Marie, um, is that we get stuck on past lives. We get stuck on the journey sometimes. And I'll say to anybody, okay, that's a past life, you know. Yes, but in this past life, this my throat just slit. Okay, it was, it's done. <laughs> you know, it's done. Feel it. Allow the body to feel it and, you know, go through the purging, breathe it out. But we, our heads get so disassociated in the, but that's what it was. And we hold on to that. That feels like the truth. But it's not the truth of who we truly are. Our truth of who we truly are is exactly, as you said, that's the moment. Just be here right now and go, wow. Wow, what am I actually truly feeling? And man, it's, it's taken me such a long time. <laughs> and I still don't get it right. <laughs> and I laugh because that's the beauty of when we look at ourselves and go, wow, I'm, I'm still learning. And for me, it's the lightness of looking at this journey of what are we learning from life? How can we look at life as a playground? Because in my superficial bypassing, I was so serious in my spirituality, son. And it was just like, oh, my God, there's got to be more. And my husband, bless his cotton socks, he would say, what is it with you people? You are so spiritual. You're so heavy. <laughs> and, and the one day I actually had to take that into context and say, wow, he's right. We always, I was always looking for the nitty gritty. I was always looking for, there's got to be more. There's got to be more trauma. There's got to, there's got, and I was overanalyzing myself, which drove me mad. And I forgot to be and show up in the present moment of going, okay, let's laugh. Let's just, let's just take the pause. Let's take the moment to just be in the presence you know, but I feel that the overanalyzing, actually, I, I think I, I know it because I know it well, is where we're here. And that's where the trauma lies, even though we know it doesn't lie here, but it's the thought about the thought about the thought about the thought. Whereas if we just allow the expression of the body to just unfold, unravel, let go, being vulnerable is so key for me. You know, and for the clients that I walk with on their journeys, like when the tears come, I'm like, whoa, there's the moment. And I feel honored 
I feel incredibly honored when people allow those beautiful golden tears. And that's where the body goes, I almost want to go, thank you. You know, the body goes, thank you. <laughs> um, and that's where the miracles happen, you know. Um, so it's been a wonderful journey, but it's been a tough journey for me. And I'm not going to, you know, kind of decipher it. it. It really has been. But when we get to that space of, and when I started to see the change inside of me, mm. is where I started to connect even more and even more. And then I started to see the upgrades happen in my body where I'm now out there that I, 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 I can be angry. Most certainly I can be pissed off, but I don't stay in it like I used to. It's like, whoop, there it is. And I access it and it's like, oh, there it is. Okay, that's the old feeling. But I don't stay in that heaviness anymore. And that for me feels so amazing um, to be able to witness the change that, um, that, uh, the change, that's it. Got no other words. <laughs> the change. <laughs> In right. Gandhi's words, is it Gandhi? Be the change that you want to see or be the change that there's something. Yeah. I, I remember the movie a long time ago, but I don't, uh, I'm not familiar with the, uh, the spiritual embodiment of Gandhi per se. Yeah, but I imagine that's probably something he would say. Yeah, and it's it's remarkable. It's you know we all it's some and and I'm just going to throw this out there. So you and I were chatting early on about you know being on social media platforms, and um, I still get nervous. You know, I still before any podcast I'm invited onto, and I'm like that. I feel like that, that that's a good thing, you know, and for me because it means that. Um, I, I, I'm still in my, I want, I've always remained um, and said that I want to stay in the humbleness of who I am. So for me, if I get a little bit nervous, I'm like, yay, that's a good thing, you know, because I'm not taking advantage of, of, of the situation or the invite because it's, in, it, it's, it's, it's almost like I want to pinch myself and say, wow, I, I'm sitting opposite yourself and I don't even know half your story of your life, but I'm like, wow, you know, I'm just, so in awe of the little bit that we've spoken about but I know that a lot of people out there on social media um, are sharing their truth are sharing their wisdom are sharing their hearts but at the same time there's a lot that are not you know and are doing it for um, the status and that's okay that's their path you know and and one thing I noticed in 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 our our change that we've all gone through in this in these last few years is that your vibration will be led to the vibration that you are led and and people will come into your space when and if um, at the right time so what I was going to share was that so often I got to hear, um, oh, they're not awakened or they're woke or they're, you know, they're not getting it, you know. Uh, and I'm talking about in families, you know, when a client would come um, and, and they'd say, oh, Michelle, my husband doesn't do this. or he, And I was one of those. Like, that's why she opened me about my husband because, you know, I really was superficial. Like, oh, my God, you just, you're not spiritual, you know. And, and, and I'm kind of mortified to even share that because that is such an ego moment of thinking that he wasn't getting it where he was probably getting it more than me because he just wasn't um I don't know I'm going off on a tangent and I feel like I'm going off a little bit but none of us are are, are more than anybody else and and I know that we have these these people who perhaps are charlatans and 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 I really hope that and I know that this is where I can be judgmental for those people out there because I'm like guys let's just come back into this presence let's come back into this moment of being in our hearts because when we're in our hearts there's nothing else that exists except pure unconditional love for each other. And that's my hope is that even when I notice that people out there, and I'm really vulnerable uh, and and very um, not not vulnerable. Sorry, that's the wrong word. I'm very naive. I don't know why I said vulnerable. I'm very naive because I just see everybody 
in the hope of seeing them for who they are. And, um, and I do, I get taken, I allow myself, I'll change my words, I allow myself to get taken for granted a lot. And I'm still learning through my business self because I don't know the difference between being Michelle Carpenter and Michelle Carpenter, the businesswoman. <laughs> and, and I'm learning that people, unfortunately or fortunately, will want more, you know, and, and I, I'm learning boundaries. I'm learning to set some strong boundaries for myself. And I do, I'm, I'm a people pleaser. There's no doubt about that. But is that good or is that bad? I don't know. You know, and um, my hope is that I'm putting it out there to the universe to go, okay, I'm an, I'm an overpleaser. What do I need to do about that? Do I feel resentment when I'm overpleasing? Sometimes yes and sometimes no. And if you notice my body language, it's like sometimes yes, sometimes no. So that's the duality. You see how we can have all of it in one moment. And I know that when I'm judging others, I've got to look back inside of myself and say, where am I judging myself? Where am I not feeling enough? And it's all a learning. And that's been the biggest challenge for me is when I put myself out there, I know that I'm not going to please everybody. And I'm learning to be slowly but surely like little crawling moments like a baby. You've got a, did you say a three month old? Yeah, yeah, baby. So that is so little, you know, and 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 I just if you feel into the wisdom of a baby, a baby teaches us, you know, they teach us so many micro moments that I think as adults we forget, you know, but the baby wouldn't be coming out with teeth and wanting to eat meat, you know. Um they come into this world and even in your wife's stomach. I mean, think of the time where, where you just knew that the baby was developing. But at any time of your wisdom, did you have to say to any of your children inside of your, your wife's stomach, you've got to grow. You've got to, you've got to, you've got, you've got to get, you've got to get the nose. Oh my God, we've got to get the nose. What about, what about the color of the eyes? I never did this when I was pregnant. I just knew that this, miracle was growing inside of me and that's what I feel like is we're all going back into the womb of mother earth you know and she's holding us and she's she's nourishing us we're lucky to be alive and be on her planet um I, I don't know if I'm making any sense right now so and I'm like Michelle just bring it back just bring it back because <laughs> I do I go off on a tangent but I get so excited to yeah. just share, you know, and it's like this burning desire to go there and then to come back. <laughs> no, you're 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 sharing a very raw moment with the audience, giving them more of an insight because most people are subject to their person, what I call their personality, and that's some of their life experiences. Is it real? Is it right or wrong? It's uh, none of the above. I mean, especially within Taoism, yin and yang is not good and bad, but most people perceive it that way. It, it, is, it's, it is part, it's collectively the singular, the oneness, yet you can see different facets of it and perceive it as that. We don't look at yin as negative or bad. That's just another force or power that is part of the collective, the oneness. And when you merge the two together, you realize all things, the mother of all things, the Tao. So that type of stuff is, is an interesting, it's really important that people realize that they're experiencing, I think most importantly is first point of healing is being accountable for your behavior and being able to realize that. Yeah. And, you know, and that comes with having a, environment where you can actually see it it's not uh you know stuffed out and and sort of distorted as one of my dear friends would say who's a buddhist monk he calls it the dukkha which is the distortion that he's constantly looking for and that's really his whole you know he's observing and everything that comes up and so, you know, I normally teach people that's sort of like the first thing is your emotions don't control you, you control your emotions. Yeah. And so I'll teach people to take their emotions and their personality, put it in the corner of the room, roll over, play dead, and we'll come back to you when 
we want you to. And so a lot of people tend to go, well, I read this spiritual book and I need to listen. You know, I like chocolate, Netflix, uh, riding side by sides, uh, jumping out of planes with no parachutes. I mean, there are a lot of different things I like to do. It doesn't measure the state of consciousness that I'm a catalyst and conduit for. And that's not even subject to that very moment, which is now. So that sort of stuff goes aside. It's like the more you realize you don't have to distort yourself and you can realize you can still appreciate, the more you resonate at the level that Michelle resonates, the other effects of the personality start to work with the default. So the more you resonate there, the more your personality is subject to it. And it's kind of like you want more of the same. Be careful what you wish for. The universe doesn't have a moral compass. So if you ask it for more goodness, more expression of love and just unconditional acceptance, then you will receive more of that. And so people just become more in that state, that selflessness, and they go, oh, my goodness, the, the more I express myself as that, the, the wider the consciousness and the higher I resonate. And it's sort of like uh, just keep, keep moving into that state, which you would, you know, talk about the love aspect, love and acceptance, unconditional. So I, I think it's really beautiful that you're sharing it with people because you have such an incredible insight and, and you're captioning, capturing a resonance with the, is it the collective of eight? The, count, the Council of Eight. Council yeah. Eight. I mean, yeah. this, is a, this is true source information, right? Yeah. So what I need people to understand is that's not Michelle. That's a state of consciousness. And that's information to all those new age people out there. Maybe they want to call it Akashic Records, whatever you want to call it. It's, a, it's real time, high resonance, hmm. and you feel it. And that's when you know you're in the right place. That's when you know whatever's coming out of Michelle's mouth is of not of this world. And so the information is being transmuted as her as a catalyst and conduit and being able to share it and express it. But, you know, again, through your own admission, you know, I have a personality, as should everyone. I mean, look, the Pope, whoever you want to call, Dalai Lama, Gandhi, whatever, they're all right, they are all right, but in reality, <laughs> they have their own their own personality. Trust me, they like chocolate M and M's and and watching yeah. cowboy movies and things that would not be considered in that spiritual box of oh my goodness, you're not enlightened. Yes, 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 right. Which is just yes. such. A, it's it's such a. It's just a. It's it's wrong to want to limit yourself or squeeze yourself a round peg in a square hole. Absolutely, and, and and thank you for that because <clears throat> I think that's where we can get so lost in translation at times too. So I started off as a counselor, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, you know that I was I was working part time for hospice, and and my journeys just evolved and evolved and evolved and evolved, and you know when we're in that personality, or I've been in that personality space of questioning my head, like, oh, what, but what, hap what happens if, you know, um, the labels, you know, I've done many different courses and one minute I'm, you know, certified this and the next minute I'm certified that. And, and when you said, how do you introduce me? I'm like, it doesn't really matter. I'm, my name is Michelle. And what matters to me the most is what comes through me when I'm channeling. And the, the, it's the information and the deliverance of the resonance of and I've asked them because I like simple, and uh, and 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 that's the thing. It's not fitting. We don't have to fit the norm. And I love the way you say yin and yang. It's the first time I've ever heard it that way, um, because I've only ever heard yin and yang, you know. But the way you say it is so beautiful. It's like whoa, it just brings you in. And uh, and that's the thing is that we are are learning. I believe we're learning to not be in this black and white world anymore you know it, it's the the way that we're inclined or I'm inclined to tap in every now and again is like whoa well that's the old version of myself I don't like that old version of myself so 
what does that old version of myself or that part of myself need? You know, because again, that's bringing it back to me because I wasn't taught how to, to love myself. I just wasn't. And it's not on my parents. It's no default of my parents. I do know, though, that a big part of my change in life and, you know, for anybody listening or anybody that's feeling this in any way, true or form, know that this is where we are waking up to ourself. Because our cells and our soul knows what needs to happen in this lifetime. We're either going to tune into that or we're not. It's, 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 it's it, what I'm being shown right now. It's, it's like the, the, the pearl of wisdom, you know, an oyster. A, a pearl doesn't grow overnight or a diamond isn't made, um, you know, without a lot of pressure. And, um, but we don't have to live in that state. I don't have to. And this is the choices that I've been making over these last many years is I don't have to live in the emotion. I love how you said you, you know, you, you can put it into the corner. I used to think and believe that I had to really sit in my emotions because that's the way I was taught. Like really feel it, Michelle, really feel it. And like, I'd be digging so deep that I'm like, okay, there's nothing more. <laughs> What am I supposed to be feeling? Like I've been crying. I've been punching pillows. Like I'm done. <laughs> and now I've come to realize over time is that feel it and then let it, let it just pass through you. Whatever the emotion is, whatever the words are. You know, the Council of Eight have shared with us that we have very limiting language in our, in our dictionary, as big as what it is. You know, it's the felt sense of the vibration. And that for me is, somebody asked me the other day, two days ago, oh, Michelle, she had a session with me and the counselor, and she said, how do you believe them? How do you know? And there's that part of me that wanted to almost justify. And I just said, I emailed back and I said, thank you very much. I said, but I just know. And and it's okay to just know. And I can feel my heart right now, just even sharing this with you. It's like, I just know. And it's, it's, there's nothing in between that space of knowing. And that for me is the ultimate trust zone where we just go, wow, wow. It's a, it's a moment of purification. Does it, does it make any sense what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, well, I, hope, I mean, you and know, it's not egotistical. I want everybody to know it's not me going, oh, my God, I just know, because I, there's a lot I'm still learning. It's just a knowing. It's a, it's a, it's a pureness that, um, that exists, and everybody can tap into it, everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a validation. I mean, I've been doing this over 30 years, and you, you get to a point where the information is the information. It's not about me. It's just there. And so what I think is irrelevant, how I feel is relevant. The information speaks for itself and it resonates with the individual. It resonates with the groups. However it is, whenever it is, whatever it is, um, you know, there is a, a visceral kinesthetic response that happens normally um, within the embodiment that I share, and it's a general sort of consensus. It's like a feeling. If you're thinking, you're not knowing. If you're knowing, you're feeling. And that's really how it, it's sort of like uh, a friend of the channel, Hans Wilhelm, would say, you're either contracting or expanding. Mm -hmm. So exactly. you know, yes. contracting, then his idea, if it's contracting, I'm going in the other direction. If I'm expanding, I'm moving towards it. And so yes. you sort of like keep it simplistic in that sense. And, you know, um, one of my teachers that I channeled 30 years ago, that's still my teacher today on a second by second basis, who's sitting in the room, enjoying the resonance that I'm experiencing right now. And I can see him right here, enjoying the space, enjoying the energy is Latsu. And so one of the things that he always reminds people of is like, yeah, it's like, He's basically, he goes, hey, look, someone like, for example, the 2024 thing, this always happens. It's like, oh, what's going to happen? Is it going to be death or strain? And he goes, listen, you're a grain of sand asking the beach, what are we doing today? 
what you need to do is fall back into the beach and be realized. Oh and so the simplicity, wow. the simplicity of that, and like you and I are experiencing this amplitude of resonance that's going Oof. on because that's the truth. And it's like, hang on, it's just a little refresher that keeps it so clear. Yeah. And it's so simplistic and it should be. Yeah. And, you know, for everyone that sort of bought into the fear mongering of uh, uh, the 8th of April, I guess they're disappointed. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> it, I mean, like, like the year 2000. Oh my God. Oh, right. Oh, oh. Right. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, and I mean, he basically says this year is going to be very uneventful, unfortunately, for most people. And so that doesn't go with the narrative. And it, it basically, he uses sort of uh, the the cycle and amplitude of the planets, because, I mean, that's really the affinity that Taoists have with the universe. And so with this month, there's a high and a low. The first day is a high the second day is a low and you just go through that and it just so happens the low was yesterday, the high is today. And so the simplicity of that and with that comes the metal element and with that comes wind and also a high amplitude of love and acceptance, which is kind of like what we're experiencing right now. And that's oh, sort of, yeah. you know, really, really simplistic and powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's so funny because it's like the third or fourth time, and I apologized to you earlier on when I went, man, and I feel like I'm just like, hey, man. Like, I'm just like, hey, bro. <laughs> hey, bro. What's going on, bro? Exactly. Like, you, I mean, wait, have you ever seen a movie? I mean, you're, you're living it right now. Have you ever seen a movie called Once Were Warriors? You know, I have never watched it, um, oh, but I've heard is... it is one of the most powerful movies. Oh, You're the second God. person this week that has actually oh, shared that. Oh, that um, with me. That's like one of my favorites, but it's it's pretty dramatic. I mean, I, it's I love it. But it's, it's 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 I love it, but it's sort of a harsh reality, right? Yes, and, um, yes. The acting is just unbelievable. It's up there with, as any, if anyone's ever seen. Um, Russell Crowe in a movie called Rumpus Stopper, another oh, absolute okay. sobering. It's a, it's you know a glimpse at um, humans at their all time low, and you know realizing that there's you know something more. But in reality, you know people are taking the present moment, but they're allowing their emotions to control that present moment, and that's yeah. the mistake. that's the, the the fallacy. That's the misdirection, and yeah. you know. Once were warriors is like, you know, Jake the Muss. Yes. And, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's yeah. this intensity yeah. about this community um, straight out of, I, I don't know which part of New Zealand, might have been Cape I Town. I the North Island, yeah. I think it's the North Island. And, yeah. and um, it's just, it's so intense, but it's, it's just, I don't know. Well, it's like the Hacker. Have you ever watched the Hacker? Which the hacker or the hacker? The hacker. The, the hacker. hacker. No, I have not seen the hacker. Well, no. The hacker. The hacker. Maybe. The, so, is, is it so a we said, African thing? Did you say hacker? hacker? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll say something. I remember the tomato, first time. Tomato, tomato. Right? I remember the first time I was here decades ago and I asked to, I went to a movie theater and asked for some tickets to something. And they're like, what did you just say? I yeah. said, like two tickets to blah blah, and they're like, "Repeat that one more time." I don't understand what you're saying, and I'm like, "Am I? Am I? Yeah. Where, where am I? I'm not in China." Right? I'm like, they're, they're like, "You just don't speak English. What? What exactly are you talking about?" Oh, and then I'll get I, know. The, I know, like we as South Africans, we say "naught," whereas I think Americans say zero. So every time I say to a client. For, you know, think of the age as naught to seven. They're like, and they're in it. They're working with the inner child. And they go, and I go, naught to seven. They go, sorry, pardon. <laughs> but the hacker, the hacker. Okay. Um, hacker. It's if you if you watch. I mean, you, you you would know coming from Australia, but it's it's every time you watch it. I mean, it's 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 so tribal. But for me, every time I just get goosebumps absolute goosebumps at the body just because you just feel that presence you feel that energy and 
it's not that like there's a there's a thought or a story around this is the this is about war you know it's there's just this this whoa bring it and that's how I feel that so many human beings that are waking up to themselves is where it's like just bring it bring it whatever that means just bring it, bring, bring yourself in, step into the direction of the flow of the universe, because it's there. It's, it's, it, you said it earlier on, it, it's, you be careful what you wish for. And that's been a very big um, knowing and thought process where I've had to change my thoughts, because as soon as you think something, it becomes something, maybe not today. And thank you for that clarity on this month and this year, because it, there is this, you know, people forget that we're still here having an emotional human experience. And that's and, predatory, really. It's predatory in most operations in the physical 3D state. Work on that very suggestibility. As long as you're emotional, you're suggestible and you're manipulated in any way, shape or form. So it's like the first thing that needs to happen is to realize the fear is not real, which is like, you know, you're not putting your hand in a, you're not checking to see whether it's the fire is hot. And that's not what we're talking about here. No. We're talking about, hang on a second. I'm stressed out of my mind because I've been on my cell phone for four hours, swiping left or right on some social media site. And I'm anxious as AF and I have no idea why, but let me just bleed that out into everything. And, you know, my wife asked me what time it is. I'm, what do you want to know that for? And you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whoa, let's get real. What's going yeah. on here? Because that's yeah. not real. No, that that is, yeah. I want to, yeah. It's kind of like I was going to say that is a concern because uh, I've seen it with myself. I've seen it with my children, and uh, you know, I encourage people wherever you are, just take your kids and just give them some some sand, you know, beach sand, or give them some sand in the garden and just put your feet. I mean, we went to go look at this home because we were thinking of moving, and this blew my mind. Beautiful home. The woman had three children, um, but they had plastic grass, a trampoline, but with plastic grass. I was like, yeah, that makes sense because, you know, you got to cut your own lawn. But why? Why would you take that away from the children to just feel grass on their feet? Because they were toddlers. They were all littlies. And I was like, wow, man, if, if we had to have happened to move into that home, I would have ripped it up because there's just that. You know, there's the – you can't see it right now, but th this beautiful plant that I have here. Mm. Mm. I always, You know, there's three in one bowl, and I always use it as an example where they're just growing harmoniously together. But if people live in high-rise buildings, get an indoor plant where you can nourish it, where you can nurture it, where you could just feel the essence of that vibration. Because when we nourish it, we're nourishing that big part of ourselves. You know, so when I give my plants water, it's it's so simple. It's so, so simple. But yeah, going back to social media, and I mean, it, we know we're all on it at times, but it's just coming back to your, your own presence of self. For me, that's what we have not been taught to nourish or nurture. I most certainly wasn't. I can only talk for myself. I most certainly wasn't, not to, again, not to any fault of my own parents. Uh, you know, my parents have taught me so much about forgiveness and compassion and truly learning to love. You know, despite the stories, despite the backgrounds, despite the fact of, Perhaps I wasn't heard at times. I wasn't nourished in the way that I'd hoped to be nourished. Uh, yet I'm here. I'm here and I'm here to learn and I'm here to, to share that sometimes it's okay to go into that way of like that kind of separation that we know to be true as a human being. And I mean the separation. My mom's passed over now. My dad's still alive. But I'm working through a few um, uh, of my own uh, lower vibrational feelings with my father. It doesn't mean I don't love him, though. And I allow the feelings to come up. I, I look into the feelings, and I'm like, okay, okay, Michelle. Now make that call because he's still alive. 
and let him know that you love him regardless of what the old way of being or the old behaviors were or the old stories in my head are about because that's all they are they're just old stories and we can go it's kind of like you know do you have mosquitoes in 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 las vegas mm, uh well not really i mean they it, we're pretty dry I, I, even in the winter we don't really see them as much as okay the, so yeah. you know I, the subject to them i've seen them before yes so you know the power of a mosquito 12 p.m at night or 1 p.m at night when it's buzzing here <laughs> you and get that moist humidity up there right we do yes and yeah. in south africa as well but you know when you hear that the power of a mosquito as tiny as what it is and you're trying to swat it and you're trying to get it and you're trying to get it and it's about that story, you know, it's about that story. How powerful are you going to magnify that story? How powerful are you going to allow that old drama or that old way of being heighten? Because you can either let it heighten and let it just annoy the shit out of you, or you can look at it, go, okay, it's just an old story. That's mm -hmm. all it is. Yeah. Make it, acceptance it, with the, the sound of the mosquito. That's that's what I was referring to, you know, yeah. it's, it's not easy at 12 p.m. at night because you're either going to sweat it and it's going to die and you're going to let that soul go back. <laughs> well, yeah. It's not, yeah. It's look, not look, unconditional look, love. <laughs> look, look, look at this, but hey, that's know? nature. <laughs> Fight to the it's, fittest, man. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I mean, we're, we're, I, we just got subject to my, my admission at the beginning of this saying I was the master of void of time and space and poof. We're, we're already ready for part I know. two. I know you've got to go, and I know I have to go. So I kind of want to, like, leave this with you coming back, like, very soon. So I don't know I what your schedule is like. So I'd like to complete this because I really want to go deeper into your awakening, your realization, the, the mastery that you share with all the people that you help on a daily basis. I really want to go deeper on the Council of Eight so with that said, after this, when we finish, I'm going to send you an email. I want you to just give me the next available date so we can continue this and go deeper on that because it's important that people understand, you know, that, that you're, you're, you're tapping into, I think it, it even makes it even more powerful when you can share these different facets of your reality because so many people, are kind of like in that state of delusion where they cannot separate and they should be able to, they should be able to be like, guess what? I got my spiritual underwear on today. Tomorrow I'm going to put on my personality and be al allowing that to be. And it's sort of, it becomes one with all things. It's very easy once you start to access that resonance which is what you're doing and so i think it's really powerful for the audience to be able to know that oh my goodness there's there's a starting absolutely there's everyone has their own starting point there's no right or wrong way up the mountain you yeah. just you know you just come to that moment you come to that realization there's never too late or too soon uh never right or wrong never too late too soon and, you know within Taoism, we just accept and allow all things which is what we call wu wei which is effortless action effortless effort and that's where people get all perplexed because most of the you know the mentor money maker um you know take my mentorship program and i'll take you from zero to 100k a month doing this and you want to manifest something you must act on it this is the component they're just i'm sorry but they're fundamentally wrong on a deeper level from a Taoist perspective, action is not action. And so when you share with someone the realization, and we have this right from the Tao Te Ching, let the man who's, who's never left the village, let him know he's seen the world. And so all of a sudden, everything is within you. You don't have to go anywhere. It's all there. It's all yours. You don't have to go outside of your village. You don't have to go outside of your house. But mm -hmm. most people, always looking for something out here they're not they don't realize it's right here oh look at that i have no idea how that look happened. at that Woo! <laughs> oh. fireworks in vegas baby yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wouldn't be vegas without fireworks <laughs> no it wouldn't be you're gonna find I out soon that. enough my friend i'm gonna have you over here um, i'm so excited and thank you for just allowing me to 
I love everything that you share and everything that you bring to our world. Um, and I feel incredibly honored to just be, you know, and to be me and to share what comes through and what comes out. And it's, it's a, I like, I, I watch your, your, it's kind of like we do this dance and I just love it. Like you, you just are so incredibly amazing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I get you. You know what I mean? You get, we get each other. You're picking up. When you resonate there, it's like, it's as if we've known each other many lifetimes because we have, and that's kind of like part of that, that, that powerful uh, connection. And yes. quite frankly, everyone has it. They just need to realize it. Yes. Very and that's so. what Michelle and I help you with is coming yes. to that realization. So Absolutely. I'm going to pause the um, pause this incredible insight and we're going to have you back on the podcast, but on a, on a, a quick note, I'm going to have you back. So I don't know whether I'll make this two parts or just make it one because I'm used to like three hour podcasts. But anyway, beautiful. what I will ask you right now, just for fun is what's your definition of consciousness? My definition of consciousness is fun. Have fun. Play like kids. I love it. Except, <laughs> except you have options. That's it. That's the simplicity of it, man. Yes. I love it. What I'm going to do is I'll just, I'm going to put this to the end, but I know this is not done. So we, the second part's going to go with this. But I'll, uh, what I normally do is I put all your social under this uh, podcast, where people can find you, what you offer. I want the whole audience to go and find you. I want them to look at all the things that you're offering within your stratosphere. And we're going to have you right back here in a minute. So I probably just Thank cut you. so it doesn't even end. So you might want to wear the same blue shirt. No, actually, no what I'll do is at the end of it, I'll be like, click. And then you change your shirt. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, that's Whoa. magic. Man. Check Woo. a duality, guys. Yeah, yeah, that's what <laughs> that this is now. <laughs> right, right, right. I love it. I love it. Thank so, you so much, sir. Thank um, you, guys. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you. Here. Thank you, Michelle. I want to yeah. thank you. I want to thank the universe. I want to thank the audience. And I am your humble servant and Sifu, Taoist Master Sun Ching. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Mm -hmm.